Hello, this is a pre-brief for the learning walk that's going to happen on Thursday, March 7th during 6th hour. And this will give you just a little bit of background information to prepare you for what you'll see. So first of all, Bridget and I are excited to welcome you to this. We had a really good time the, for the ghost walk, but then also for our first learning walk. And this is our second learning walk and we're excited to host this again. So the way it will work is that we will spend 10 minutes in for in each of four classes. And so the first class we're gonna visit will be Amy Courtney, and she is teaching sixth grade exploratory, and of course it's an art class. And she has said that her students are working on an animation perhaps tool, I guess we would say. And so they're working with what she called animation desk, so that must be on the iPad, an app, and they are exploring sequence and gesture. And she said that it's okay for us to talk to her students and just ask them what they've been working on and what they're creating. And that is all you need to know about her class. The second class we will be visiting is Ms. Horton's class, and that would be sixth grade library. And uh, the students are working on applying the CRAAP test. So that's a test that they use to determine credibility of a website. So they'll be looking at two websites and they will be filling out um, a crap sheet, which I love saying, um, to determine if it's something that they would trust or not. And this is the first time that they have done this by themselves. So there will be um, probably lots of questions and they will be thinking critically about what they're looking at. That's, that's the hope anyway. It's totally okay to talk to kids um, and ask them about what they're thinking and what they're doing. And that should be, you know, it should be fun to see them working on that. So the second, or the third class, I should say, that we're going to visit is Matt Amundsen, and he is teaching fifth grade language. And in his class, they are working on writing their daily logs, so their daily writing logs. And they have already transitioned into continuing their work on sequential writing. So they're using the videos How It's Made, which are great videos, um, to work on the sequence writing skills. And he co-teaches with Michelle Patachik, so she will be in there as well. He said it's okay to talk to students, that's perfectly fine, and they're expecting us. And he wants us to know that he has a large number of IEPs in his class, and he does co-teach with a special education teacher. And then the last uh, place we'll be going is Sarah Casterton's room, and she teaches seventh grade science. And they are working on an outdoor lab, and they won't be outdoors, which is great for us. Um, they'll be back inside, but they'll be looking at the data that they collected while they were outdoors, and they'll actually be working in small groups trying to find some data that they can compare their Decora data to. So they'll be trying to find some comparative data that's out there in the world. So they'll be doing that work and that should be interesting to see them working in groups and seeing how they handle that. And that will conclude our learning walk. And then after school, we will meet in the third floor conference room and we will discuss what we've seen. There's a protocol that Bridget will walk us through and you'll have an opportunity to share what you saw and ask questions of the teachers because they will be there as well. So we are looking forward to it. Um, if you have any questions, please let us know. Otherwise, we will see you in front of the art room tomorrow um, at the beginning, you know, just to get there as soon as you can um, with those three minutes of passing time. And then we'll start, you know, right as everyone's there. We'll have clipboards for you guys and we'll have a note taking sheet and we'll have pencils. So really, you just need to show up in front of Amy Courtney's room at the beginning of sixth hour. All right, thank you. Okay, what do we need to be working on? You have your blue books out, you have them open. You started some of your character development yesterday. Today we're looking at expressions, right? So whether you're still looking at your figure symbols, right? You might be adding these facial features. Whether your characters are things that don't actually exist, right? I also have handouts in front of you at your table. Not that you're going to use all of them, but you pick and choose what's appropriate for the character in your blue book. Blue book should be in your table folders. Yeah. You're just sketching out ideas, getting a little bit of practice, and then in a few minutes, we're going to take these ideas and we're going to add them to our characters on our iPads, right? Right. If you have questions, about something with your character, if you have questions about one of the handouts, go ahead, raise your hand, and in a little bit we'll start grabbing those iPads. Oh, I have it over here. I just 
start taking a look at adding some of, in, some of your expressions in. Yeah. And we just started looking at the iPad the other day, so you'll catch on super quick. Yeah? Oh, sixth grade, quick question. Do you think it's okay for a character that is not human to have human characteristics? Yeah, yeah. yeah or vice versa, right? These are your animations. These are your creations. And so how you decide to mutate things together the details that you decide to pick and choose, that is your choice. Just because you sketch it in your blue book, does that mean that it has to be your final answer? No. We'll continue working with these. I am going to have students start grabbing their iPads. As soon as you get your iPad, it's just staying at your table. We have a few things we need to review before you actually open them up today. All right, table one, you want to come over and start collecting your iPads? Thank you very much. Should I use this for now? Yeah, just for now, because
publisher if we apply the copyright symbol. Hmm? Okay. So what would be? Publisher. If you're looking for author, there might not be an author. You're not seeing one here. But remember, you can go to different parts of this website too. Okay. Okay, so you might want to make that note. I couldn't find one, you know, on the page. I, um, I found that it was um, developed by a group of teachers, so I did that. Mm -hmm. <coughs> You know a little bit about Columbus, so kind of skim the information. But then we also talked about reading sideways, you know, where you could open up another tab, and you're free to do that as well. You know, we're mostly just looking at the website, but you can certainly do the sideways trick, too, that we've been talking about, especially if you're confused. down for a couple of those. Okay, yeah, the gut strings, that's kind of interesting. Uh, the last group of kids really thought that uh, that video was kind of tough to watch because of the what's kind of shown in there because they're using the test types for sheep. Okay, but they actually produced the strings on it. So that's pretty, pretty awesome. Yep, actually to tell you the truth, uh, as we get started with those videos and some of those things, you'll notice around the room, maybe over by the pencil sharpener, I've got one here. I have one right over there you can see. You know how the videos are showing up and it says that they're actually blocked? Okay, then you can click on them and you can still watch them. Okay, because they've been checked over by the teachers, so they're okay to watch. Um, but I made these lists right here, so if you're clicking on them, like I said yesterday, and you're not exactly sure what the name is, come up and check here. Or try that alternative route that I showed you yesterday. And if you're not sure what that is, I remember how to do it. Okay. So just raise your hand and I can show you we how to do it. We have four adults that. in here that can move around and help you out. Right? Does that sound fair? Mm -hmm. Okay. But that's an easy way to check the names here. And then there's also one more thing I'm going to show you on Weebly. But uh, one thing I wanted to point out, <laughs> notice when I was taking notes on a couple of videos looking for a high interest video, some of the cons, do, do I have any information put in there? No. Why do you think that is? What would be your reason for There's that? There is no con. Okay. Alex. There was no, nothing bad about the video. Yeah. In my opinion, right? Okay. I really enjoyed the video, other than it was maybe tough to watch because of some of the stuff they were using in there, right? Okay. But I thought the video actually was very interesting, and the steps in the video were very easy to follow. And that's the big thing we're looking for, right? Like I told you before, the Lego video that I chose, I like Legos, but the video was kind of tough to follow the steps. So my, my writing, it's, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. I like Yeah, it did. But did you learn something about sardines? Yeah, it's pretty cool. There's a lot that you're going to learn. Also, down in the silver one, I wrote here that it's a neat process, but the steps in the video are hard to follow, and there was a lot of steps, right? So let's say you're really into silver, just like we were really into Legos, but the video maybe just doesn't suit you well for your writing activity. That's where you might just have to choose something different. Does that sound fair? Okay. Now I want to show you one more quick thing. You're free to ask me, but I don't want to be bombarded with some of these things. But on the Weebly page, do you notice anything different here There's today? another one. Yeah, I actually added another one right down here, how it's made another link. But when you go into that, it's not going to take you right to YouTube. Well, maybe now it won't work. No internet connection? Oh, no. Oh, no, we could be in trouble today. Facebook. I can check the teacher here. I can just to make sure it's not. Play, play. Try the other one. Well, hopefully that one will work. Oh, no internet. So we could be in trouble. Okay. Yours, is yours working? Okay. How about you log on to the one that we had yesterday? It's got 36 options in there, and we'll see what's going on with this next one. On the next little box that I made for you, I have a video on bubble gum. Because some kids were curious about that, so that might be an interesting well, one. Yeah. Okay, Jawbreakers. I did one on, uh, a student requested on how they make horse saddles. 
Another student requested how they make uh, Nike shoes. So, and then I think there was one on tractors, because you had requested tractors. Yes. Okay, but the tractors are a smaller version. It was a lawnmower. Mm -hmm. okay? Yeah, but that's okay. You're used to the lawnmower. There's a lot of steps in making it. Okay. So I think hopefully as you guys log on, Salami, okay, uh, hopefully as you guys log on, maybe some of those things will work, all right? So let's pull out that sheet, right? You can plug in your headphones. We have some people maybe coming in the room, and I've actually talked to some of them about maybe coming up to you and asking you some questions about what you're doing and what you're watching right now and what activity you're working on, all right? Alex, you have a question? I don't think so, but I did one on how baseballs are made. I added a video on that. Okay, but I think on Mr. Peter, Mr. Peterson's group of videos, I think there's one on how footballs are made and helmets are made. Okay, Luke. Mine isn't working. The new one? Yeah. How about the old one? Okay, I'll, I'll maybe check that out real quick. So you might have to dodge those, but we got 36 other options, so we could go into those. Does that sound fair? Okay, make sure you have your sheet out. Make sure you're using the pause button as you're working on this. Okay, and I want you to record some of the information, either pros or cons. Okay, Tyler. Okay, well, I'll see if I can get that figured out because we're working for the last five. All right, go ahead, get started on that. Does everybody, does anybody in here need another one of these sheets? Because you've watched more than six videos? No? Thank you. 
Yeah. 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 Ye
own city. Furnaces kicked on on this little brick house. Take a everyone for hosting uh, for our learning walk today and everyone who decided to take time out of their classrooms to participate in our learning walk. So we're going to start by um, going around and sharing evidence, things that we saw in the room that stood out to us um, as we walked around to the different classrooms. Do you want to do a whip around or? Yes, okay, I do. I can start. Are you sharing too? Is that okay? Well, I was thinking in the interest of time, I might not. Oh, yes, yeah, I do not. Because you, you and I kind of, I think we slowed it down the last time. Okay, perfect. Good. Um, yeah, you can start. I can start. Um, I noticed in Amy's classroom that there was some kind of classical music playing in the background. And I noticed in Matt's class the, that he encouraged um, the partner talk. Um, something I saw in almost every class, I think every class, was they were using technology. I noticed in Amy's classroom there, there wasn't a lot on the wall, um, but you did have that sign that said inspiration exists, but it, is, it has to, oh, but it has to find you working. I noticed actually in all of the classrooms that um, students had questions throughout the time that we were in there and all of the teachers uh, were just moving about answering the questions and the students who were waiting to have their questions answered and all of the classrooms were waiting very patiently. I noticed in uh, Shannon's classroom on the TV it looked like there was evidence of a mini lesson that we had because we came in part way. Um, that it was still up there, and that will be questions afterwards. Um, I noticed in Amy's classroom that she, like you said, it was the there was music music playing, and it was relaxed, and the natural light was really good. I noticed in Shannon's classroom that they she had them do a pre-activity before, which she modeled it. I think the day before I found out from a student. Also in Shannon's um, classroom, I noticed as I looked around all of the students, um, there were a lot of smiles as they were quietly chattering about their task. And it seemed to be a very positive, even though it was a very ser serious task, they were all smiling and, and happy with the task they were completing. Yeah, I noticed that in, in Shannon's room too, the helping, they were helping each other out at the tables, and I also noticed that in Amy's as well, it had uh, almost, a, because of the music, but it had almost a cafe-like feel, kids were conferring with each other. Um, in all the classrooms, the teachers were constantly walking around and helping students as they were in. And there was a tricky <coughs> word sign. Uh, Matt's classroom with the here, here. Um, in Sarah's classroom, I noticed the This Is Me wall, where um, I don't know if it was all of your prime time or all of your students, but they each had representation in that classroom of their individuality. I noticed uh, in Sarah's classroom uh, that one student uh, had some confusion uh, as about his data versus another person's data, and he felt uh, confident enough to get up and to go look at the data that you had provided for for them and compare. Um, I thought that Matt's activity was really cool because it could transfer throughout multiple um, subjects. Um, in Sarah's room. 
I liked how she added the choice to the activity where they get to choose their own location to research and learn about temperature and what the questions you had to have that you had to man. And I'll build off of that. I noticed um, that this is an ongoing project that they're working on. Uh, but I really, I noticed and liked that it's a group activity, but yet they have some individual responsibility that follows it up. And so it, it was a nice mixture of the, the group work followed by the individual accountability. And to follow up on that, I noticed <laughs> that, that in this group activity, you could see that it had developed enough that they knew what their task was and um, it kind of moved very seamlessly uh, without a lot of explanation about what to do next. Um, I thought that the students were given choices in almost every single one of the classes we were in. I noticed in math classroom you had your group really mixed up. You didn't have, you know, they, your IEP students, students who struggled were splattered throughout the group. Um, also in math classroom, I noticed that classroom management had been well established uh, because there were a, a few students who, when it was time to watch the videos, didn't have headphones. And without asking, they knew exactly where to go to get those extra headphones and, and did so without disrupting others or having to bother you. Um, um, in Amy's classroom, I, I noticed <laughs> on her desk <laughs> um, some uh, 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 some books, uh, Amulet, uh, Calvin and Hobbes, and, uh, um, and I'll have some questions about, like, it looked like they might be mentors, okay, like for kids to take a look at. I liked how Sarah said, when you were calling out um, questions to for answering, you said, who can beat it, who can beat it, to kind of get them fired up. And <clears throat> I noticed in um, Shannon, with Shannon's activity that she did, it allowed for some stretching, like going above and beyond. The student just got this big smile on his face when he was working on it, because he had taken it a little bit a little bit different direction and just beyond, I think, what some of the other kids were doing, which was cool. Um, one thing I, I also noticed in Shannon's uh, classroom was that there were two students who were separated from everyone else, and it was more of a mentoring a situation where one student was um, needing more assistance and so there was another student assigned to the student needing more assistance and they were just more removed from everybody else to have more I guess privacy in that. I noticed in Amy's classroom as we walked in at the beginning there were on the screen there was a list of things to do it was clearly kind of spelled out what they what, what the purpose of the uh, of that time was and then what they would need to do in order to get into that um, activity. I thought that the what they were working on in Shan's class was really cool and also I noticed two girls who figured out the website was bad and they were really excited that they kind of figured out the trick. Mm -hmm. I noticed in Amy's classroom um, your table groups you had some with two people at, at, in a group four people in a group, you know, one table or two tables pushed together, it was a little bit different, which I have some questions about for you too. Um, it may have been available in all of the rooms, but I just happened to notice it in Sarah's room, and it might have been just because it was the last classroom, and so I was looking for different things. Uh, but walking in the middle, the first thing I saw was a growth mindset poster, and so that was a good reminder as the students were walking into your room to have that growth mindset. I think I'll pass. Um, I liked in Amy's class, as we were walking in at the beginning class, and you were saying expectations out loud and they're also on the board to meet the needs of multiple learners. Probably getting to an end here is some of main points, but I did like how you had the associates up and standing and working with them. That was good. Um, I noticed and broke down for every single classroom that we visited today that all of the students were focused and engaged and on task. Um, no matter how fun or involved it was, they all knew what they were supposed to be doing and they were all very focused and engaged and, and personally taking responsibility for what their task was.
right, great. So now it's time to ask questions. So I think we'll whip around questions as well. So who would like to start? Can I ask um, the seating Amy, in your room? Is there a reason for, or do they choose their own spots? I didn't get a chance to ask the kids, so. I select their spots, and they get to sit at the table where they want to sit. And it really just is for the different sizes. That's one of my smaller classes, some of the tables that are pushed together. So yeah, I just have flexibility in kind of moving people around where they can take okay. um, I had a question for your room also, as I watched that. I'm very curious about the yoga mats that are by the door. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> It, as they um, earn the privilege of having flexible seating, which kind of just depends on the group and it depends on what we're also working on, um, that's one option. So the drawing course is in the back of the room and kind of like the sun room, yeah. that's one option. But they have to face the window so I can kind of just buzz by and kind of see their work without interrupting them. And then the yoga mats is another option. Some of them like to like work on the floor or even kind of like underneath. Um, and then they can also just work at a counter and move around the room in different scenarios. So it's just something I use as kind of a uh, uh, privilege they earn, depending on the group. I have a, I have a question for Sarah. Um, this is, it was, first of all, it was exciting to see data being, like real data being gathered and, and used, and so, um, one of the questions I have is, do you have plans? I, did, I keep such a short little thing. Mm -hmm. Do you have plans to synthesize the data or draw <coughs> conclusions from those data? Or um, how will this, how is this in a progression? Mm -hmm. So tomorrow they will see the monthly class average and the daily average, and that's short term. And then over the course of the entire school year, at the end of the year, they'll take and they'll map out that data and graph it and analyze it and compare it with our 18-year average, which is the data that we have from the high school and from the middle school for all of our first Thursday years. And they'll be able to compare that and talk a little bit about how that trends and how theirs is different. And they'll also, on that graph, map out um, their other biome location. So they'll have that in comparison with maybe geographically where it was located and why those temperatures were different. And they'll, um, they do collect soil temperature too and talk a little bit about why there's a difference in air temperature and soil temperature. So it's a neat culminating project at the end. So I think that's um, a cool connection for kids to have to look okay, back. Just one mm -hmm. up question. Yeah. Is this the same comparison site that they have all the time or do they pick a different comparison Good site? Good question. Same one the whole year. So the one that they start with at the beginning of the year yeah. for those nine months is the same. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Um, I have a question for Shannon. The I thought the task that they had was really interesting. And was it called a craft test? It was. <laughs> yes. And sometimes I say, okay, I want to focus on the P in craft. It's okay. <laughs> it's yes. the poster. Right? She had it hanging up. I can share yeah. that. And I can share that with there. you. Yeah. So it's an yeah. acronym. So we've already gone through what it stands for. So it's like currency and um, relevancy and. CRA, so author, and then purpose. And so we look at those four aspects when we're evaluating a website. And I didn't come up with it. It's all the librarians out there. It's, it's, there's also a fart test. <laughs> that one's good, too. Because it just is perfect for middle school. Yeah. 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 You know? So it, it, it gets, just gets their attention, and it's funny. <laughs> but I'm happy to share. That <laughs> Matt, you're, um, on the wall, you had the alphabet with the hard words. Are these words that you've introduced through your language work, or where are they? Well, we've, uh, at the beginning of the year, we all read the same book, Rain Rain, uh, throughout our wind time, and so that was just a board we kept up there. I thought about <coughs> taking it down, but my kids referred to it so much, and so I've just left it up there throughout the year because they'll oftentimes get up out of their seat, and they may not recall uh, exactly how to spell certain words and stuff, and um, Maybe I've talked to them about there, there, and there, and the different meanings, so they can't remember in their head, but if they go back to the wall that I have there, they can remember what they mean by the order. It triggers it or Yeah, something. and stuff like that. Okay. So we've just left it up there all year, so. Uh, my question is for Sarah. Um, I noticed this 
very nice posters on your wall about the standards. Oh yeah. And yeah. we've talked a little bit about that and mm -hmm. I've considered it. Um, my question is, how often do the students refer to those and how well do they understand those in terms of day-to-day -day learning? Yeah, so I, I refer to them a lot more this year than I did last year and I direct the students to them. And so we recognize the check marks with things that we've already completed and then the bullseye with being on target. So I would say at least once a week they are looking back there, they're turning around there, and it's usually at my direction, right? Take a look, this is where we're at, this is where we're going, um, have we met this? Do you see the connection that we're, what we're doing now connects back to the standard? So that's been really helpful. And those are put out by who? Um, so Andrew Ellingson and I made them okay. and um, sent them to Keystone and we had them printed. Okay, mm -hmm. good idea. And so then moving forward, yeah. sorry, follow-up question. Mm -hmm. um, I thought about doing that also yeah. and yeah. so just from your perspective well worth the absolutely. effort and the wall space yeah and yeah okay. absolutely right. and Gene uh, just completed his okay. and we'll take him out next year and I think he's excited okay. excited to refer to those mm -hmm. okay. I wonder if it would make sense I'm I wonder if it would make sense if we all had a similar look to our standards. Mm -hmm. And jeans are yep yeah. jeans are just like mine only different background okay. yeah these are fancy. So I'm going to jump in too. I think you've had a student comment on mm -hmm. how are you going to teach all those this yes. year. Yes. Yes. So, so, the, so I know like so they are thinking about seventh it. Seventh graders Absolutely. have noticed it. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. That's what I wondered if it was yeah. just something just that we there. feel good about that uh -huh. it's there. Yeah. And that we can point to or mm -hmm. if they truly are thinking about it. Thank you. Yeah. Um, a uh, question to Amy. Uh, this is about those books on your desk. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, more generally, it's about m mentors. I noticed that you provided mentors on, in, uh, on a piece of paper uh, for the students to kind of study. Um, and I was wondering, and you also have very short periods of, I mean, it's a very short time period that you have to do all of this work. Do you um, have the students? Study mentors in a kind of a systematic way. Maybe the the, the person who does the uh, amulet drawing or Calvin and Hobbes or or um, you know that kind of stuff. So I'm curious. Yeah. We don't. Mm -hmm. um, the resources you saw at the tables today mm -hmm. is actually something I don't do a whole lot of mm -hmm. because if we weren't transitioning into the iPads where then they are recreating, right. mm -hmm. it's just this model they want to trace. Yes. So that okay. was really there because I knew it would be such a small piece mm -hmm. of, of our activity that day. Um, and I only introduced those today after however many days we've been in this exploratory where they have been constructing their own. Because I knew today they were going to look at those. Mm -hmm. And that's how I've always struggled with, like, especially illustrators, right? Yep. How do you blend in ideas from these masters, right, yes. without then diminishing their ideas, because they'll ultimately compare, and especially starting in sixth grade, assume that they aren't doing what they need to do, right. the quality they need to do. So we don't get into a lot of those texts. I'm really going to break your heart right now. No. Those books on my desk are actually for my eighth graders that are doing okay. like a micro comic okay. like where yeah, they'll no, totally take cool. only a piece mm -hmm. that abstracts mm -hmm. something that was an image. No, it, so it, I'm I mean, sorry it, it wasn't even No, no. It like Helen and Hobbes yeah. was on the table. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. And those yeah. was just again yeah. to see yeah. like yeah. expressions, how can you add expression into your character development. Yeah, and so what I'm curious about, whether yes. it's for eighth grade or seventh grade or whatever. Right. I, 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 I'm curious because of the struggle, I think, with yeah. mentors. Uh, right. Mentors are extremely powerful right. uh, because we, it, it provides what, like where you go, right? But they can be copyable, too. And so that's why I was curious. I, I think that's, uh, that's a, an open question. Right. And I know me. this maybe isn't what we were discussing, but in fifth grade, mm -hmm. they do use some of those resources when we look at comics. It's kind of like that stepping stone into sixth grade. But again, yeah, yeah. like I think we've had conversations about too. Yeah. How do you show them without 
over crushing them, them right? right? Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, and that's a good way of putting it. Yeah. Oh, this is for Shannon. Where do you find resources that are? I'm untrust, not trustworthy. That I didn't have a chance to look at that one that they were looking at. But um, you mentioned that they saw that it was not trustworthy. It, just from a, like the space of four feet away, it looked trustworthy. Yeah, that's why I love that one. But, but it was, so the, the deal is, it's yeah. just well known in the library world that that was created by a librarian and a teacher and two fool students. So it was made to look really professional. Oh, okay. So that wow. one's really fun because the, the, you know, at, at first glance, you're like, this is awesome. Yeah. And then when you dig in, if you actually skim some of the information, like there was one kid that you mentioned that, you know, read that Christopher Columbus was born in 1946. He's like, what? <laughs> and, and then at the end it says that he, that he died in 1906. And that he shared some of the technology, like the Indians loved his cell phone. <laughs> yeah, like, so it's hysterical. Uh, yeah. And then if you read the author bios, they say things like, has lived her entire life underground. And so uh, they that one's made exactly for this activity. There aren't many like that. And then we move cool. into real sites. You know, uh -huh. So then the next one they looked at was an explorer site that it, it looked like good information, but there's no information on the author or the, or the publisher, nothing. And that really, that's where all the questions was. They, they can't understand that, you know, if they don't find something, how yeah. do they, how will they note that to me? You know, like there's this disconnect. Like, well, the, if you're asking me for it, it should be there. Should be there. Yeah. You know, that, that yeah. was kind of hard today. But that one you wouldn't trust because you just have no way of knowing where it's coming from. And the information might be valid, but I have a feeling they just put it together to put ads on it. And it's common information that people look for. So it's tr it's it's like a level of thinking that's that's hard, and yeah. some of the the kids really struggle today, and you don't always know how to properly support them. That's what that's where I struggle. How do I make that bridge? You know, yeah. that's tricky. I did have I had to tell you this that one kid. So one kid figured out, oh, it's satire. Like, the, and it's not. But but that was a really great line of thinking, and that's our vocab word, right? So it was like sweet, you know, applying the vocab word. Like, that's great. Like, thanks, buddy. And then someone comes up to me, another kid in class, and he's like, I think that this is citrus. <laughs> citrus. <laughs> citrus? <laughs> I'm like, satire. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what it was like, oh it's like, come on. It was like, yeah. <laughs> so funny. Yeah. I'm like, I love that, that they're using that yeah. word. Or, you know? Or aren't you glad oh, you used yeah. that word? <laughs> yeah, I did notice when one of the students got stuck and would not get past the fact that he couldn't find the author. And or stayed there, basically. And stayed the there. Time. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I even asked a question about, well, if you can't find it, then maybe you could go on. Or I mean, right. I said that several times, and, and I don't know how. He was really hung up on yeah. it, which is yeah. something. It was like, just write down, I can't find it. Not there. It's, yeah. you know. Isn't that funny? That but mm -hmm. I'm not sure how to, yeah, how to support that better, because it you saw that, and then it remained that way. Did it really? Yeah. For, for a couple kids, I would say two yeah. kids. So. It's kind of like they have to go in chronological order and can't go on until they Yeah, and they're so the used board. to it. A teacher will ask you a question and there's got to be an answer. Yeah. There's got to right. be something. Isn't that something? So right. it's like, yeah, you're undoing that and that's really hard. Can I ask as long as we're, um, the media bias fact check website, what does that entail or what? So I, that's a site that I really like and I show it to them. And it's one tool like in your tool bag, you know, where you can go to that. It's also. It's also a Chrome extension, and I had them installed on all the middle school and high school computers, but now the extensions have been removed, which is a real bummer, because you could go to a popular news website, like you could go to the BBC, and then in, the, in your extension, it would have a little light up button, and it would say, you know, it would, it would just have C on it. When you click on it, it says this is center in terms of bias, and the factual reporting is very high. And then you would say, okay, I feel good about this, I'm gonna go on. Or if you went to something like InfoWars, it would say this is pseudoscience and conspiracy. So like for the major news outlets, it will review them. And they have a really good system of, of you know, figuring out bias and figuring out quality. And it's not, you know, it's, it, it's all subjective, right? News is written by people, evaluations that be a bias check, fact check are done by people. So there's, there's gonna be 
you know, some questions, but they also have a method of reviewing things. So if people, enough people say, like, I think your CNN rating should be further to the left, then they, re they apply their methodology again. Oh, okay. So I feel really good about it. I've, other, I've done other webinars where people recommend it, and they feel good about it, just like Snopes. Snopes is a good one for checking viral rumors. So those are two I show these kids, and then I kind of just ramp it up as they get older for more tools. So, so I did show them this one. And I showed them Snopes. And so some were using it, but then, you know, again, this is hard stuff. Like, you can't check, you can only check ma major media news outlets. You can't check um, whatever that Explorer one's called. I'm just blanking on it, but you can't look that one up, you know? But they were applying it, and that's good, you know? So, so and then uh, Peterson shared some things with me about reading laterally, like opening up a new tab. And I started using the word sideways because mm -hmm. I felt yeah, like that yeah, might help. Yeah, and then, so th I really like that term. And they were John Green videos that I'll use on the high school level. But like you have, now you can't just apply the crap test on your own. You have to read laterally to figure things out. You have to read sideways. You have to open up a new tag, a tab and do a Google search because you can't, you can't figure it out on your own if they're so tricky. So that was Any more questions? To Matt, what's happening next? With your, uh, well, you've got them thinking about videos, right? Yeah, actually, yeah. I've talked with Steve about this idea, got the video idea and stuff from him, just trying to have a high interest uh, activity with these kids, and you've been working on informational writing and stuff for, um, and informational text for the second quarter and third quarter, so we've done, you know, like compare and contrast, and. We're going, to, we're going to do cause and effect next, um, but we've been working on the five components of that uh, informational you know, writing and stuff. But right now, the kids are just going to be working on selecting their video and choosing one that they feel like is a high interest for them, but the steps make sense to them and they feel like they could write a paper on it. So then after they choose their video, I've already chosen a video, which is the Legos uh, topic, and I thought that video was a little bit harder to follow, but this, you know I can follow the steps. I think it might be harder for them. So I'm going to model just step by step with them. Just after they've selected their video, I've had my video selected, and then we're going to watch the Lego video over as a whole group, and we're going to focus strictly on the steps that we see throughout it, so that they can see me model that for them, and then um, <clears throat> then they're going to go back and do the same thing in their video, and then we'll go back to my video and we'll we'll focus on watching it and. Uh, picking up the details in between that so that the kids really struggle with writing um, and so you know just talking with Steve as my mentor and things just trying to get good ideas of really trying to model that all the way out for them and so um, you know obviously they'll watch the video that I've chosen multiple times but it's nice like for them to be able to see you know where what I'm doing and what I what I want them to you know, work towards you know and, and model those type of styles of writing and stuff so um, you know a lot of times I will teach and just all right here's what I'm expecting and maybe do the whole project and model the whole project for them and then let them work on what I want them to accomplish but then I, I notice too that I'm dealing with lots of questions like they forget and so just trying to take a different approach and talk with you and just chunking it up basically step by step so that it I, hopefully it feels like it eases the stress for them you know because writing is a tough component for those kids and uh, if we just break it up in little increments, I feel like by the time we're done with our project, they'll look back and be like, wow, I created all that. You know what? The videos, they're, they're learning stuff off of them, and they're so into it. You know, they are so into sharing about uh, how hot dogs are made, you know, <laughs> and uh, how sardines are made and stuff. So it's just great to see them conversing and talking about that and choosing a video of their interest. And um, uh, then we'll be back on it with me and just breaking it down step by step. So. I feel like uh, earlier this year we did a little research. You know, one of our topics was doing research, and I chose the state of Iowa, and we worked on setting up paragraphs and an intro and a conclusion paragraph. But I feel like it was so much information that I gave them and worked ahead. You know, we did one together, but by the time they were able to to do their own, it was hard for them to recall all the steps that they were trying to do. Just lots of questions, so I feel like this would be a good approach. And having Steve as my mentor bounces some ideas off of him, and uh, that's been really, really helpful. So, 
that's kind of the plan next. We'll see how it goes. But it's gonna be hard to get them off the videos now because right. they're so into them. They just basically, I feel like they almost want to watch each one of them. You know, but that's where I wanted to promote the partner talking. You know, and then I may be able to talk with Amy, and she watched the one on sardines, and I watched the one on hot dogs, and she didn't like the sardines, and I didn't like the hot dog one, and so maybe we'll just choose a different topic. You know, just bouncing it off of somebody else, or they may say that they did like that one, and maybe be a good fit for them, and so they may select it. So. Yeah, that's the plan. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Any other questions? So let's wrap it up by going around and sharing something that you maybe will take back to your own classroom <laughs> or maybe some inspiration or an aha moment that you had when you were in the different classrooms today. One, one or two or something. Um, Sarah's, uh, but um, I uh, Sarah's project, um, this long-term data gathering project, uh, really got me thinking. I, I I'd like to do more data gathering in my science class, even in in the writing class. You know, informational text writing to actually go <coughs> into the world and find, gather data and use those data to to create stories. And to analyze it. so it's it was inspiring to see that and uh, it makes me want to to think of how what kinds of data could I gather right? maybe not for 18 years but, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, yeah. um, well I'm a very fresh teacher but from my experience and I'm just teaching figurative language is <coughs> I want to use technology more. Um, also, I liked how Sarah had their, her students using clipboards. I think that's a really good way to allow them to, like, flexible writing. They can move around the room. So I would like to use that in my classroom. Someday. I had a couple of things. One was um, the Google Docs. As I was watching your class, too, and I'm thinking, oh, how good it would be for library, computer class, um, or score chart classes, health, maybe to sit down and just say, okay, what are we teaching? Because, you know, I do some of that in seventh grade, what you do with the, you know, checking website validity. Um, so, you know, so that was something that occurred to me as I was looking at this. as well. Like what I teach, how I teach that one yeah. level. I know, website, exactly. So it's kind of the needs as they arise, you, you try to handle that. So that's something. And then the standards, just thinking about how I could, in this room, even have some way of recognizing the standards a little easier, like Sarah did with the posters. Um, you know, maybe mine by class, something, I don't know. But it got me thinking about um, exploring that feature a little bit more. I kind of want to say something, that's okay. I didn't get to go around the rooms, but just yeah. sitting here listening to just what everybody noticed. You know, and just soaking that on, and it's just really interesting just to hear everybody's points of view and you know the people coming into your room and what they pick up on. You know, and I think that's really beneficial. And then you know, me too hearing about the standards that she has up on the wall, just hearing students referring to them. Um, I just you know, my first year here, I think there has to be a way for me to get myself more familiarized with them each and every year, and then uh, have my students have a connection to them also. You know, and so. I think it was really beneficial just hearing what everybody had to say and um, just take that back and it's nice to hear what people notice as they walk into your room because you know I notice certain things and I may think certain things and I walk into other people's room and oftentimes not discussing it and stuff so it's good to hear. It's really fun honestly mm -hmm. it's just um, it kind of lights a spark I think for, for me it does it and, and I know that we I work with really amazing people but it just reaffirms it, and it's, uh, you know, if I'm talking to a parent, I'd be like, oh, yeah, you know, he does amazing things in his room. I was in, you know, you, you can talk firsthand to right. what you see with that teacher. Yeah. So I, I appreciate that yeah. opportunity for me, too. So. It was neat for me to see my kids, too, seeing the adults walk in and be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And then they were so <laughs> spot on. You know? I was like, you guys are welcome every single day. I'll baby. see you tomorrow. <laughs> Who's subbing in what class? Tomorrow, you know? So that was good. I think 
it's been a great, the learning walks have been a great experience for everyone involved, both sessions, this one and the one we did a few months ago. So I think getting the word out to our colleagues, like at a team meeting, um, and just saying, hey, this is what I participated in, um, because it is really beneficial for the host and the, the participants. So. I'd have to agree. Honestly, you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you, a lot of times when those emails come out, first year here, I feel like I'm pretty busy and got a lot of stuff going on, so I might just deflect them a little bit. But, uh, you know, getting an email a week ago or so and, you know, saying sure and then reading a couple other emails later and be like, oh, this is what I'm signing up for a little bit. You know? <laughs> it's like, well, we're just going with what we got, you know? You that whole yeah, but it worked out. That was so great you. Yeah, that was nice, but uh, everything worked out great, but it actually made me want to just be on the other side, you know? You know, and just see what else, and just to be able to walk around and see what other people are doing. You know, especially, I wasn't in Sarah's room, I've never been in her room, but just, it just made me very curious. You know, and stuff like that. So being curious is good. I think also the other one I was able to go around to rooms and then now being on the flip side of things, it also makes me think of the perspective of our students. Like they are transitioning between a yeah. hundred personalities, a hundred different expectations. And so when I go into somebody else's room, especially when it's just maybe so foreign from what I do in my own, right? It just reestablishes there's some kids that this is a really hard thing for, right? And it like makes me empathize a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, to get engaged, like to take, to go from hallway to engagement in a different subject area, then right. back to hallway, and then engagement in something else yeah. completely different. And I want your 100% here, and yeah. now this person wants it, like, and now, yeah. you know, it yep. just, yep. eight times a day. Yeah. Right, yeah. and, and different, yeah. a different, you know. Something could have just Experience. maybe not have gone quite right the last class period, and they have three minutes, right? Or, or I expect them to yeah. pull it come together in three minutes and come ready. Yeah. Or something happened in the hallway. Yes. yes. So it is very. That is a great point. I'm just gonna add that I often like focus on the minutia. Like I, when I'm teaching, like I'm focused on the kid that's not getting it, and, yes. I'm, and I'm troubled by it, and yeah. it's bothering me. And so when to have you come in and look at the big picture, yeah. right. and, and even when you're there, I'm all of a sudden aware of the big picture, yeah. you know? And like, can I never do that? I, yeah. I just get like yeah. micro-focused, you know? Like, yeah. what's going on here? Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's sometimes kind of negative, you know, yeah. in terms of my take on it. Like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, I didn't set that up right. Or I, you know, I forgot to tell them that, you know? So it, it helps get me out of that. It's nice too when you have people in your room and then you have a little hiccup with the computer where the lights aren't working and then you have extra bodies in there. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I was like, I'll just casually step over here and take care of that. <laughs> Smooth transition, so you know? You for technology. Yeah, that was. For management. I could yeah. use that all the time. Yeah, that's team. Great. Team. Always. Always. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I do appreciate that about my class, so is that uh, having. Michelle and then um, Denise Solberg and uh, Paul Snell, you know, just extra, a lot of yeah. kids that need assistance and having those extra hands in there. Uh, but that's one thing I will say is that uh, it's great to have the hands and the teachers, but then those kids are also having to learn how to work with four different adults okay. in one environment and stuff. And so um, and in my classroom, I try to make sure that even like Michelle's and working with special ed teacher where we're team teaching I try to have the kids respect everybody on the same playing field like if I'm the main teacher but in today every day we're all the main teachers in there you know what I mean so we try to have that mentality every day but yeah. okay. well, once again thank you for participating thank you thank you